Hello and welcome to another edition of Not The Eternal Journey. I'm those elves still, but today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. And that's a new game, which is Causa Voices of the Dusk. So this is another online card game, uh, much like Couple of Us, but this one has got quite a lot of polish and a couple of mechanics that I actually do kind of like. So first up, uh, this is a beta, so I think we've got like a, a full collection. I do also have uh, four codes to give away, but you do need to use them by the end of the month. So comment below on what interesting thing you've seen, and I will send you a code. But you do have to redeem it by pretty much Tuesday this week. So yeah, you've not got long. I was supposed to do this on Thursday, but I've just been absolutely hammered just with work and other sort of things like that. It's that time of year. So... The, the depth alone looks kind of nice, you know, there's a lot of interesting artwork, like this uh, Mind Watchman here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but we're able to build our decks. We do start with uh, four theme decks. I'm going to pick these up against the AI just to sort of show you what the game is all about, so you, show you how the, the game actually plays out as well. But we also have like different leaders. We've got like, looks like they have different abilities. And then of course, there's a lot of customization. We've got like avatars, titles, banners, which is basically what comes up in Do Your Name. And you can also have like backgrounds for your side of the playmat, which is really nice. Also, there's a little bit of law there as well. I usually I don't read too much into law, but I guess you know if uh, this game you know plays out as interesting as I think it will do, I might take a peep at that. But yeah, again, you can see these sort of mirrored here in the four factions, which is glory, wealth, influence, and spirit. So glory is the only one I really know, which is the beatdown faction. Wealth, I've got a little bit of a idea of that. It seems like you sort of discard cards from your own deck to sort of have some effect and then later on you've got effects that shuffle key cards back in so it seems like maybe it's just like a, a deck quality type of archetype so as you can see if we got to build a new deck actually uh, you get to pick from one of the tribes i don't believe there's any crossover yet so you just get to pick like that so we'll pick wealth and then there's two different heroes um, i'm not quite sure what this is here i think this is something that'll happen in game where you get to pick one of these abilities when this threshold is met uncertain because i was unable to get that far i've just got through the tutorial and yeah i'm still excited to play it so you pick a leader and then you pick cards you'll see that you've got up to 30 slots and there are some cards here which seem yeah kind of a bit good like a zero cost draw a card and plus one play for the turn so basically just cycle through deck makes your deck even thinner so we're, we're probably talking like Gwent really when that first came out and you had just really consistent decks which is something that I do like I know in Eternal we've got 75 card decks plus the market the market is the best thing I've seen in that game because it does make the gameplay more consistent which is something that I do like so of course get to pick your own background card back so all the customization is right here from basically day one which is just really impressive so I'm going to cut out this though I'm just going to go and find a, a fight against the AI so first is AI, and we've got the four theme decks. I'm just going to pick up the Glory Basic first, and then give it a play. So similar to some other games like Hearthstone, you do get to mulligan like specific cards from your hand, and you should re recycle in. And I'm uncertain, but from the games I've played, it looks like if you mulligan something, you don't draw an additional copy of it. So I am going to... I do like Vigilant. Vigilant is... So this is a dark attacking game, and Vigilant means that it's basically taunt. If your opponent wants to attack you, they have to attack this first, rather than any of the units or you. So I think I like this, you know, which two drops, but I think I'll get rid of one of these sentries. Just so we've got a bit more diverse cards we can play in. Okay, so if you were on the draw, so I thought I was just playing that busted card there. Just really cycling through the deck. Oh, got our, our avatar here. So, one thing I really like about this game, this is the resource system. So, unlike auto mana, where every turn it's just like you get plus one mana or plus one influence power, like whatever name we've given it, because those are generally kind of the things that we do in card games, is just that we have a name for the auto mana. We do something different, which is each turn you put a card in this little blue shiny thing here. So right now, um, I can't play this Axe Blow. So I'm going to put in here, Axe Blow's a good spell, but it doesn't matter that we've basically shredded it for the turn because later on we can get it back. So we do have one 
mana that we can use to spend on anything, or one cause as it's called in this game, and we've used our axe ball to do that. So we can actually make some plays though, because we've got the amulet, because we came second, we get the amulet which is activate, plus one play, and plus one cause for the turn. But I think we're going to use that next turn, and then we're just going to play out a shiv as well. So you can have up to four of basically relics in play, or support cards. So this one's going to give something additional power. This one's going to let us basically use this turn here next turn to get a bit more of an explosive turnout because we should be able to put all things into play. So we're ready here. But don't worry about these cards being gone. It's not pledge. It's similar to reservist and versus system where you play something down as a resource and then later on in the game you can actually pour it back, which is really nice. So I'm just playing card tape, just uh, completely not paying attention. So... Okay, I promise playing a bit of a strategy here where they're, it looks like um, they're doing damage to themselves and their own units to be able to um, power up this unit here. Just time you were damaged, it obtains one attack, which is nice. Some of the translations are not going to look great right now. Uh, I think that this is Brazilian Studio, I'm not sure, like a, one of the other games that covered Mana Rocks. Uh, but that will just improve over time, especially as more people are playing it, more people are like, hey, Leonel, you know, let's help you out. So I am going to put Frontier Militia Man in the void here. Probably not going to get that back from cars, but if we activate our amulet, we get plus one play and plus one cars, which means that this turn, instead of having two, we've got three, and we're able to make three plays. So this is why it's interesting, because even though you've got the amount of like mana or cars you've got here, you get to make two plays every single turn, and you draw up until four cards at the start of your next turn. So... Play this this is going to do something for supplies which so supplies is something that is a lot heavier in the wealth faction and this is give a target heal by free i think there's different types of supplies but then we've also got the the sentry here so what i think i'm actually going to do is i'm going to give the shift to the sentry it feels a little bit better to trade cards really aggressively because this means that if i promise to attack us at all have to attack here we get to kill their thing which seems like a big threat Oh, we have a decision available. Yep, I'm fine. So that's kind of nice. It's reminded me there's a thing you could have done, but yeah, we're not going to do that because we could have healed ourselves for a little bit of damage. But do these get better as get more of them? Yeah. Ah, okay, so I'm probably going to heal our opponent's witch here. So we might have to put in some more resources into killing it. But we're about to draw four cards, so it's fine. So if you had four cards in hand at the start of your turn, you'd just draw one. So another thing that you can do as well is... Actually, we can play the... Actually, if I kill it, I feel kind of silly. So um, if you have a unit in play, you're able to put that into your cards as well, so you can keep playing things. So if you've got a one-drop in play, you can, instead of just like trading into this free one, you could just use it to add to your cards for that turn. I'm not going to do that this turn. I think we're just going to attack our opponent with these units. Going to kill this. Perhaps slightly out of order, but I don't think it really mattered there. And then we can got a few charge here, which we're not going to use yet. I guess we've not got too many powerful plays to be making here. I guess we could just be really aggressive. So Give this Iron Sword to this unit. So most of the supplies are support cards. It looks like they've only got one use, but there's... I think I've seen one that is that stays in play, and it's just at the start of your turn, something happens. So I, I'm just going to ready the turn here. Oh, yeah, I can still dedicate. Should probably do that. Get rid of that. Don't need it. But then next turn, I'm probably going to play this Axe Blow from the Void because it deals free damage to an opponent target, so we can probably just kill our opponent here. This File Zealot is a really cool card. I was playing with this. Um, Briefly in the tutorial. Oh, well, we're losing our board, which is not great, but we are going to be able to play a spell from our void. So I kind of don't want this, so I'd rather play some void, but we can play the axe blow to kill this. We don't have any more aggressive units, do we? We can give them aggressive. So aggressive is basically charge or haste or whatever the keyword is that means that when it enters play, it can attack this turn. So maybe we could actually just fiddle together like some sort of win here, but I don't think we can because it'd just be requiring a few turns. So deal two damage to opponent units and one damage to allied units. 
actually kind of like that because we don't have any units. So, smart play there. So I play the supplies here. I play the frontier combatant. And I'm just going to heal ourselves. Let's go to this. And then I think next turn, just because we can probably use it to be able to kill our opponent if our opponent doesn't play a taunt unit. Uh oh, well they've healed themselves. That's not great. It's not great news at all. Each time a player ends their turn, the damage by one. Okay. I kind of like that as being able to, if we don't die this turn, then we're in good shape. So I'll attack our opponent. I like this being in play. This means you only need to get our opponent down a little bit more. I think we still can't play the card from the void because I think we should probably still be trying to win here. Put a Brave Settler in there. Furious Charge here for the 7 and then just kill our opponent. There we go. It's not quite how I wanted to lay play out because I did want to play a card from the, the cars pile. Just be able to show that mechanic but um, we'll probably get to do it in the next game. So as you'll see as well we do have sort of like level up systems. For the 4 different factions there is a sort of a mastery system that's already built in. So as you can see this game is still in beta and it's got a lot of things that don't happen in most other like really impressive games until later on like I think that Arena's only just got a mastery system. Uh, Eternal's had one for quite a while around the the five factions there but yeah just to have this like from day one it shows me that they are learning from other other games and other people within the industry which is just really key. Okay, so back to the play screen. I think we're going to play Influence now. I think I might actually, given this isn't taking too long to play a game. Also, it's like a, a massive heads up for me. Quick games are great. Um, I'm probably just going to play all four games, especially against the AI. Um, the community is quite lively at the minute, but because I want to be talking stuff, I don't want to be roping other people. I'd much rather play it like this and then when I've got a bit more of a grip of the game and I've got like interesting decks to show you, that's at the point where I'd like to be playing against uh, actual humans. So for now, just play against a random opponent. We're influence basic. Oh wow, what a scowl. <laughs> like that sort of thing going on. And actually, the other thing that I'm not too sure about is how small the cards are because the art style is really interesting. You don't really get to see it all. Like, look at this. I imagine if they do premiums in this game, it could be similar to Gwent where it looks like an action scene. Uh, that'd be really great or even if it's like a turn but it just like the art style shows that an action's happening so like with this here you're able to make some like bits of silver just to sort of show all these knives are being thrown so i'm gonna get rid of supplies i'm not quite sure where we need that but we've got something that heals us oh okay dead end i like that deal one damage to all opponent units plus one okay so our hand now seems kind of controlling i'm gonna bin this just because it's a forecast also intellectual <laughs> What, what a unit type. I keep these events because they look cool. Well, we are on the play. And I'm just going to put this... Uh, oh, are we the mill faction? Yeah, let's put the counterfeit in there because we can get it back later. So there is something as well. So if you have no cards left in your deck, for each card that you would draw that you can't draw, um, you do take 5 damage. So... You can perhaps gain enough lives to be able to do things. Ah, oh, looks like something's unlocked for us. What's this? Oh, sweet. So this is the turn that this thing opens. Okay, so that, ma that makes sense. So when you build a new deck, you get to pick a hero, and each of the heroes has like a different thing that unlocks on these levels. Okay, so that makes sense. So on turn one, we could do this, which is pacify all upon characters for a round, which means they don't get to attack. A summon invoke an emblem of influence. So end of your turn if you have a rogue, an intellectual, and a schemer, minus two cards to the opponent's deck. A little bit of a misspell in there, but I do like this. Yeah, nice. So does that take an action? I might just get it. Okay, that's cool. So we've already done the cards. I'm just gonna play this because then we get to draw the one card. And then just ready, pass to the opponent. Also, these dead ends are really cool because we're going to be able to kill probably whatever our opponent plays in the early game, we're going to be able to kill that. 
I believe that resistance is the, the health side of the card. So it's like attack and resistance or power and resistance. I think power and resistance is probably where it is because that sounds more in line with the theme of the game where it is about sort of like pledging to your cars. So initiative minus one card. So initiative is summon. So we're just going to pop the Flurry Knives back and just play some Meddlesome Gossip, which is just a one free that is able to sort of like discard one of our opponent's cards from their deck and then just ready it up. So I'm uncertain if we've got any effects in this faction to be able to keep bouncing back. But this is probably like the more controlling of the factions. Oh, our opponent's using their ability. So yeah, a lot of these cards, I'm just not going to know what they do, to be honest. Um, oh, I've also got a free free. That's quite the clock, actually. But, okay, so change of resistance of all opponents' units to one. Okay, so... That seems to be like a consistent misspelling, but that's, that's still kind of fine. Um, so what I think we're going to do is if we pop this... Oh, it's stealthed, rats. I thought I was going to be so smart then. I was going to pop this for one damage, and then I was going to be able to kill it with a dead end. But I guess we'll just do that next turn. So for now, let's just scheme our opponent for one. And then I guess we just pass the turn. We get to do something again next turn, which would be make a plan or a uh, other plan. So... Bureaucracy destroys part, then minus one card to the opponent's deck. Or a lot of compiling minus two cards to your deck, and then plus one to your cards. Huh, that's interesting. Destroy support. So what's our opponent's support right now? It's this uh, amulet. So we could be able to snipe their amulet if we want to, which could be nice. So unfortunately we've been unable to make these plays. We could have made a play from the void. Like the, the flurry of knives. But I think for now, I'm kinda of happy like this. So we do get to kill both the, the opponent's units next turn, hopefully. Oh, we get to kill it straight away. I suppose it's played uh, Desecrate there. Uh, kill a card, and they take free damage. But I'm very happy just to play both of these just to kill our opponent's stuff. So initiate deal one damage to the other units. I do like that. So I think we're just going to dead end both of these. So I think our strategy is just to keep the board clear so we can actually get this uh, mill strategy going. Uh, we do have a decision ready, but I don't want to do it. It's nice it reminds you that you can do that. We could, of course, have used our plan, but I want to draw three cards this turn so we can start getting some things on the board. Then I guess all we need to do is keep our opponent empty-handed and unable to draw cards, and we should be able to like, kill him in one turn. So we've seen we've drawn a lot of cards here. So we've got a Vigilant Unit, which we might play, but I think we're just going to play the Blackmailer and the uh, the Black Market Bandit. Oh, we could wait. We could do Unmask into Black Market. That seems kind of cool. Okay, well, let's go to this Informed Settler. I think we're going to pick here just to... So the Solar Campaign is plus one cards, minus two decks. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. So, get a bureaucracy. Didn't make what decision? Oh, okay. I don't know how to do the decision. Well, oh, maybe you had to do it on that turn. Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, that's something that we'll know for next time, I guess. But for now, change the attack of an opponent unit to one. Uh, I don't really need to do that, but... I kind of want to like put this together like as a combo, but I guess it's fine just to go one damage to the other units, and then we'll just like change all of them into like a one-two. Yeah, this is still fine next turn because we get to kill literally anything with our our blackmailer. So probably going to do that, <laughs> kill this four-two because this, yeah, this can do quite a lot of damage. Uh oh. So the different cards have different animations as well. For the attacks, so it looks like it sort of differentiates between um, perhaps more melee units and more ranged units, even though there's no actual difference per se. It's got different animations, which is kind of nice. <coughs> so I've got a Nistan Messenger. So draw a card and plus one play for the turn. So this basically cycles itself as long as we've got the power to do it. Okay.
I think I'll hold on to this conspiracy for now. I guess we'll void it, because then we can just sort of do everything that we want. Which is, play the messenger. Minus one card to the opponent deck, okay. That's probably better than doing the unmask. So, minus one card to their deck, just get a little bit closer to milling them out. And then change the resistance of all our units to one. And then I think we're actually just going to book the opponent for five while we're at it, and then just T-Loss for three. And I'm guessing that's why the turn count is up here, just to let us know like how far or how close we are to doing this. So I suppose they're actually doing quite a lot of damage to themselves. But we probably need to do something about this Vile Zealot, though. Well, Pono's done something about the Vile Zealot for us. Which is probably wise, but we get to draw free now. We do need to be mindful of... If we spend all of our cards, oh, our opponents used a spell to be able to put cards back into their deck. So deal more damage to all opponents units and plus one play for the turn. So this is pretty cool. This seems to be pretty much what we want to be doing as our strategy. Just get our opponents units down to one health and then be able to do these sort of spells. That's pretty interesting, actually. So we've got lethal to unit. I don't need to do that. So let's go in here and actually use one of these spells. So uh, which one do you want to do? Conspiracy other one is a unit as well. I feel to use the counterfeit. Yeah, it manners wants us for like the cards we've got for the turn. But then we'll just put it back anyway. And then initiative, you are healed by free. So it seems like this deck's probably really good at just staying alive and just being able to try and fatigue or exhaust the opponent into being so your damage obtains plus one plus one. Okay, we've seen these this style of card seems to be what's in the sort of like faction which makes sense because they seem to have like pay life to do effects just to be able to turn that into a little bit of value so may as well play the messenger because it does draw a card and make us an additional play for the turn so we can use the poison to kill both our units, our opponent's units. And I think we might do that. So what does this trigger off a rogue intellectual and schema? So we've got a schema, we've got intellectual, and we've got another schema. So we need a rogue, really. Uh, but let's just give this a little bit of poison. Ah, okay, so this is the number of cards, not the actual turn. So we're going to do this. Yeah, do we? Or is it the turn? Hmm. Well, let's just poison this. Perhaps could have waited and given the poison to this, but I think for now this is fine. We do need to be mindful ourselves that we're actually getting pretty low on cards just to us. So we don't want to actually mill ourselves because we the control that kid. Maybe we should start to ignore our opponent's units and just start going for their face because if they... Go to like 10, we should be able to kill them just after 2. So let's take a look at what our turn 8 ability is. So plan, add an Imperial Magistrate or Politics, plus 2 cards to your deck and minus that. That's really good. Okay, we're probably going to be doing that. So we've got a Conspiracy to minus 2 cards to them. Is there anything else really interesting here? We could... Okay, that's interesting. So we could get them down to having just two cards, but I think we'll do that next turn. I think we're just going to play the Black Market Bandit for now. Just as like a big bit of pressure, and then I think we will Conspiracy our opponent, because I don't feel like we're in danger of just being killed here. Then it's, This is highlight, but we've made both our two plays, so it's just to tell us, do you want to put something in here? And I don't think we do right yet. Of course, if we put a diplomat in there, we'll be able to draw an additional card on our next turn, but I don't think we need it right now. I think our plan is just to kill them this turn. Okay, so trading units, 
we're taking a little bit of damage. Unfortunately, we never were able to get value off this, but I assume when you're building your deck around this hero, that's just something that you are actually going to be doing. So, if we go far... Oh, this isn't until next turn. Oh, it's the cars. Okay, so you need the, the amount of cars to do this. Okay, makes more sense. So that's a good reason to go and chase it then. Hmm. So in that case, I guess we only need to do one mill ability. So I guess we'll just change this to a one power. So we're in no danger of taking, we are gonna take five damage, this turn just by the cards that we're going to draw because we're going to be drawing free cards. But I think we're in no danger of dying here. And then as long as we're able to do two damage to our opponent. Oh, the... Okay, so we don't have to do any mill into them now. The opponent's just dead. <laughs> if they basically spend any of these cards. So we've got a bit of fatigue here, but we are going to use the supplies just to, along with the botanist, just to be able to heal ourselves. And just, uh, do we hit some of these down? I think we do. Let's play this in here, because then we can get the Two cards to your deck sort of thing going on. There we go. So we only take 10 damage instead of 20, which seems wise. So I put us in a position now where they do need to not spend any cards. Okay, so we can just pass the turn and just kill them then. Unless they get us to 10. Uh oh. Well, we're at 11, so we're okay. So I guess we just play our medals some gossips and just pass the turn. Just send our point a message and now we get to kill them with the... I'm not sure why I've clicked on that. Yeah, our point dies to fatigue. So... Okay, that's an interesting way to be able to win a game, but let's go on to the next type of deck. Okay, so let's play with some spirit, which is actually what we played against last, so hopefully now we've got a sort of an understanding of how they play, we'll be able to play their deck a little bit better. Okay, so I do like this card, this Journey to the Unknown. It must be a like a neutral card. It seems pretty good. So initiative annulled, targets healed, state of turn character's healed by one. So this is a part that stays in play. I think we can probably get rid of this one and the Val Zella, as good as Zella is. I feel I'll keep this, it seems like we do do a lot of payment of lives. Oh dear, six drops. I think I'll probably put the one in here because we can keep it safe for later. So let's just take a little journey. Okay, so we've got to play next turn. So let's just get rid of the channeler, play the amulet. I guess play the healing rites. So of course there's four slots for units and four slots for support cards. But what we've not shown you yet is that once a unit is in play, you are able to push that into your cars. So if you wanted to have like a damaged unit, put it in there and then replace it with like a better one. So you're still able to keep playing to the board. So if we two cards deck, I do like this. I don't know who this hero is that we're against. Um, this sort of like greeny thing. I think this is instinct two. So let us put this channel in here. These cost six. We can get them back later. Then we use our ability, which is plant add a soul ember. So plus one attack to the character and plus one play for the turn. That seems good. Invoke an emblem of spirit at any turn if you have a priest, a mentalist, and a witch. All allied targets are healed by four. That seems pretty good. 
Forget that. That's probably what our deck is about. Okay, so we've just got some witches now, but... I guess these, like, the level 1 is the one that you're supposed to be building your deck around, which is, like, the three sort of unit types. So we'll just ready here. We take one, but then this is going to heal us um, at the start of our turn. So it should just be our opponent that's sort of being damaged there. Then, of course, we've got this unit, which each time we're damaged, it gains an attack. So our opponent's probably going to deadly blow this. Does seem sensible. Okay, so here we go. Our opponent's got a unit here that is, well, a support that's got multiple uses. So just like a, I don't know, whatever the artifact is in Pauper and Magic the Gathering. Serrated Arrows, that's the one. Our opponent's got our Serrated Arrows. Okay, so we've got to hide things as well. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Plus two resistance and hidden. I don't think we quite need that yet. I play a light barrier, which actually we might play that out of order because that might be. I might have put us on too many cars to be able to use this ability. I'm still not quite sure how this works. Deal one damage to all our targets and plus twenty cars. Now nah, let's just summon invoke an apparition. Okay, so that's fine. Still get to do our thing. And furtive is that stealth, so I may attack any target ignoring vigilance. Oh, that's interesting. Then, I guess, is this worth just, like, blowing that up? Uh, I think it is, because we get to shuffle it back in anyway. And taking damage seems fine. Because we do have a lot of cards that do care about being damaged, and I've got a bunch of cards that care about just healing us. So, over the course of the game, this healing right is probably going to heal us for, like, 7 damage. I suppose I've got a taunt unit now. Plus, I'm going to attack you other units, so I feel kind of uh, silly about using that, um, that kill spell now. But we did draw another one, so let us start with Journey to the Unknown. Okay, so I do like these uh, light bearers. Let's just destroy this. Play another light bearer. Um, two damage small targets. Our opponent doesn't seem like a deck that is caring about two damage. Although this does synergize with what our deck is all about. Let's just try and kill our opponent. And then just, I guess, yeah, I could just use this just so we get to draw four. I'll do that. So I think that this is probably just like, yeah, I'll take this now. This is a game where maybe it's okay to sort of um, do things. They're kind of aggressive in terms of card economy, just so you get to draw more cards. Although there is the drawback that you can mill yourself, but with cards like that, we'll get to put cards back in. It's kind of okay, I guess. So summon two Soul Ember Alchemists or add a terrifying apparitions to your hand. Hmm. You summon other characters. Destroyed in book Soul Ember. Full unit event or spot is played or activated. It's a witch. Uh, guess we'll get the one that's a card. Oh, oh, that makes sense. Okay. So, when it was saying that you can only make this decision, we're learning together. Um, it means that if you pick the symbol, so because we picked a map here, we can't pick a map here. So, then we have to be smart. We used the summon here, which means we can't use the summon here. So, I think we've effectively made it so we can't use our, like, our level seven, our level seven ability. Okay. So, there's probably a lot to think about this game. This seems to be... A lot more of a deeper strategy than it seems. Maybe it'll end up being... Uh oh. Well, that's not good. That's our board wiped. So, reach. When it attacks, it receives no combat damage. Okay, so that's like a ranged attacker. So, any turn, other allied targets are healed by one. I do kind of like that. So many damage, it gains plus one attack. Um, I do want this big witch in play, though. So, let's get rid of this. Let's get the actively big one in play. Where each time we damaged, um, it should get plus one, plus one. Yeah. And then I guess we... I'm getting kind of low on life, so let's play this. Pretty sure this heals us as well. Yeah, okay. Oh, we're being uh, absolutely destroyed here.
Ah, okay, so... This reach is interesting, and now I'm feeling pretty silly about this uh, spell the void, but it's okay, because we can probably play it. I heard the withered air. So if we... Ship and I targets healed by free. We'll keep that. We'll probably need that next time. So if we play the witch and the healer, just to heal us for free. Then hopefully our problem doesn't just wipe our board and we're able to deal like a point of damage to this. Hmm. Uh oh. Well this hurl weapons seems good. <laughs> just deals like a, a free damage to all opponents. That's uh Yeah, I guess we're dead then. Just only deals one damage to leaders, otherwise that could have been pretty spicy. But I guess we withered air deal damage to all targets, just you know. Go out with a bang. There we go. Well, on to the next deck. Maybe we didn't learn as much about uh this style of deck as I thought we did. Okay, so we're going to play some Wealth, which is the last one. Probably the most interesting, it does have this sort of strategy where it sort of uh, discards cards from its own deck for like value. And we're against uh, the scowly faced like uh, <laughs> character. Like. So, got immunity deal more damage to your opponent for each enemy character. That's a support as well. That's kind of interesting. Um, servant. Vigilant as well. Uh, do we need multiple mutineers? Probably not. Could be a win condition though. I guess it's fine. I'm just going to play some one drops and then. Uh... Okay, so I suppose using the emblem influence. So we want to look about a tree, see what we've got. So we've got a summon. And we've got a no summons yet. Oh, it summons at the end. So we probably don't want to use this summon here. It does seem like a really powerful one, but maybe that's because it's balanced because then you won't be able to use your like final level if you do use that. So, oh, Slidey Cartier. Plus two cards to your deck. That seems really good in this uh, sort of strategy, but we'll tuck it. So, as, as we've seen, um, you can just play things. So, it is realistically just fine put anything away because nothing's lost it is just like the reservist mechanic so if you play something face down as a resource later on when it's good you're able to get it back so you don't get into these positions where like say you drew a hand that was just full of fives and sixes where later on all your fives and sixes are just gone forever so your deck is just weaker so this is kind of nice um i guess we'll just kill this We'll probably just put one of these away. Guess up to two here. Um, 45 plus 5 to resistance. I don't think we can do that because you shouldn't be able to go over the maximum. But what is it, the emblem of wealth? Is it worth it? So at the end of your turn, if you have a trade, a mercenary, and an aristocrat, grant protection to your characters. Protection is like a divine shield. So that could be worth not getting one of these. What are these? The brute is... Okay, it's a card we've got in our hand, or a Desert Blade, which is, while having 10 or less cards in your deck, obtains 4 attack. That's basically a 6-5 then. Hmm, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I guess we'll just play, play Mutiny, play the Amulet. We'll use that next turn to be able to get out our Brute. And the, oh, it's only got one use to it, so I guess it's just like a one-shot deal 4 damage. It's probably not very good actually, unless it stays in play for a bit longer. Hmm. Well, I don't want to waste our gain 5, but I'm not sure if you can only use it on the turn that you're supposed to, so I guess we'll find out. After we've taken some damage, we are going to give that a try. Uh oh, this is probably a pretty bad matchup for us then. If I'm not able to discard cards from our deck. So, let's just. Uh... Activate this. 
This actually looks like it's pretty well set up just to be like a mobile game as well. So Vigilant Initiative, yeah, probably don't want the minus two cards to my deck. Kind of card where we could just play these. So this is kind of bad for us, but we're just going to activate, put one plus card in our deck again. We can only play this once per turn, but we've got five uses of it, so hopefully if our opponent's not able to deal with these five fives, we can just kill them in like two turns. And it kind of be fine. Yeah, again, not too sure about the, the smallness of the cards. Because you can't see like this great artwork. Like I just want to know what's going on. It feels like some sort of Game of Thrones thing. Yep, so opponent's playing a two four that heals them for free, but you can't go over twenty. There's no armor that I know of. So, we get to grant plus two plus two to an allied unit. That's a support. So, that seems good. 7-7, seven, seven, boot pew. Uh, do I have anything else to boost power? Initiative draw cards, probably a bit uh, aggressive. So, let's put this in here. Let's chuck our opponent in the head for like five damage. These cards are great. Um, do you have anything you want to play? Nah. Let's just activate this. I guess we'll just not make plays this turn. And then I suppose we just deal two to prompt. We could just wait. Maybe get to do four next turn. I don't remember the influence having just like a straight up kill thing. It was like combine multiple things together to be able to um, so like give them one health and then deal one damage to them. Uh oh. Well, I should have used our thing. But we've still got 12 damage here, so we should be okay. So, I mean, I was going to do this just to see what it does. Huh, nice. Well, there we go. The power of wealth doesn't care much for your diplomacy. So that's it, four games with the four different factions or influence types that there is in the game. So there is no market yet. This is like the big version of the game. So it looks like you just have like a full collection to start off with. So if you go between acquired and crafting, it is just the same cards. But yeah, got the different factions here. Neutrals as well. And then we've not got a deck yet, but I'm probably going to build one. Um, I think I'm enjoying this game. I'm probably going to do some more work on this. Yeah, probably add this to the channel as like a thing alongside Eternal. Um, hopefully this works out. So thanks for watching. I hope that resolves. Um, if you're interested in the game, I do have four. Where's my hand? But four codes to give away. But you do need to use them before the end of the month. You redeem them on Steam. So let me leave me a comment. Let me know you're interested in the game, and I'll hook you up. So thanks for watching. I hope that resolves. I'll see you around.